So good evening and welcome to the Scene Sterling Pathway Session. Um, and we're delighted tonight to be joined uh, by Nicholas Bone from Magnetic North Theatre Company. Um, and we're here tonight to talk about um, artist collaboration and development. Um, and we're also to, here to talk about, about Magnetic North and in particular the Rough Mix program, which is um, being launched and artists call, an artist call out is up at the moment. Um, and so I'm delighted to be joined by Nicholas and I just um, welcome to Scene Sterling. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be here and even better now you can hear me speaking. Um, Magnetic North is, uh, we're a company based in Edinburgh. Uh, at Summer Hall, uh, although at the moment we're all working from home, like uh, like almost everyone else. Um, we're a small company, it's me as artistic director and a producer called Verity Lee, and uh, we also have an artistic administrator, Caitlin, who uh, deals with uh, our artist development work and um, particularly around applications and all all the uh, everything that's involved in that um and we run a program of production we develop and produce work but we also run a program of artist development uh and the the scale of that program has really developed a lot over the last few years it started off as one residency a few years ago which was rough mix, which is the thing that we're now, uh, uh, we have applications for at the moment. Uh, this will be the, uh, I can't remember if it's the 11th or 12th version of rough mix that we'll be running uh, in January and February. Um, and it's evolved since the first one, which was just uh, at the end of 2006 uh, at Dance Base in, Edinburgh, but the, the kind of core principle of it has always been the same, which is it's for a group of artists, uh, usually five or six, who each uh, from different art forms. So we've had a really wide variety uh, of people taking part in it, um, uh, as well as theatre people like playwrights, we've also had choreographers, uh, composers, visual artists of various different thought, uh, sorts, including uh, sculptors. Uh, we had a stop frame animator uh, working with us on the last one uh, in January this year. Um, and it's really about getting people from different art forms together and giving them I suppose it's two opportunities at, in, at the same time. One is an opportunity to work on a new idea or a new way of working, which might be something that uh, someone's been interested in trying out, but hasn't quite found the opportunity to, uh, to do before. Because I know often if a, a lot of people are working either through self-producing or commissioning, being commissioned, uh, and that is not always conducive to uh, taking risks or doing something different to how you've done things before. So the idea of Rough Mix is really to create uh, a kind of a risk-free opportunity for people to try doing something in a slightly different way. Um, the other part of it is the opportunity to meet and observe and work with artists from other art forms. Um, and the, uh, the idea of it at the start was that I think what certainly my experience and I think a lot of people working in the arts, their experience is that maybe early on you get, you might work as somebody's assistant or you might get opportunities to observe people. And then after a certain Point, and you learn a huge amount from that. And then after a certain point, as you gain more experience, those opportunities aren't there anymore because I suppose people assume that you kind of know what you're doing. So you don't need to, um, 
you don't need to observe other people working or just be ar be around them but i I've, I've always found that incredibly um interesting and um i learn i learn a huge amount from seeing other artists at work uh, particularly from other art forms and seeing how they approach things how they think about things so rough mix is um it's really about creating circumstances in which both those things uh, can happen. What usually happens is that Rough Mix is a two week residency. Um, and the plan originally had been that this would happen at the Robert Art Center. Um, and usually what happens is there are the five or six lead artists each coming with their idea that they want to work on. There'll be a group of performers available for them to work with. There'll be two early career artists who are also there to observe and learn and su support uh, what's going on. And over the two weeks, each of the lead artists gets time to work on their own project. Uh, so we always have we always have two studios available at, at any one time. So there's uh, there's a kind of mad scheduling process of uh, trying to work out where everybody's going to be at any one time. So that every day each artist gets some time. And often it's a fairly short session, maybe only an hour and a half or so to work on their idea. And then the rest of the time they're uh, they're in watching other people at work and what starts often starts to happen is people start drawing on the the skills of the other artists and um, and uh, sort of quite interesting connections and collaborations start to arise from that as well obviously with the, the way things are at the moment we haven't been able to plan to do it in that usual way um, but we didn't want to lose the opportunity to do it so we're going to try doing it as an online residency uh, using uh, this technology of zoom which we've all got so used to uh, in the last nine or ten months and we're going to do it with a slightly different schedule to usual. As I said, usually it's a two week process. Everybody meets on Monday morning. The first thing that happens is the lead artists do a bit of a presentation to introduce themselves and their work and the idea they're working on. And then we kind of work from there. Um, but one of the, one of the really important parts of the experience is people getting to know each other and having time to get to know each other and obviously that's going to be that's different in a, a digital uh, setting so the way we're going to try and um, make that easier is that this will be over three weeks for the lead artist so the first week uh, will be an opportunity for the five um, or um, actually six, six, six lead artists to talk about their projects to one another, to get to know each other a bit, as well as having time to plan how they're going to work in the second and third week, which is when the other people, the performers and the uh, early career artists uh, become more involved. And also in that week, we'll kind of be working out okay how are we really going to do this because i i don't really know how it's going to work so i think there's going to be a collaborative process of working out how we do something that i know i know how a rough mix works but i don't know how a rough mix um with everybody in different places works um so that in itself will be an a, an interesting collaboration um so that's what rough mix is and that that's one part of the the artist development uh, opportunities that we run at magnetic north we also have another 
we have another residency which is called Space Time, which in fact is on next week. That's adapted very easily to um, to being uh, on Zoom, although it's different. Space Time is much more of a kind of reflective uh, residency. It's how it usually works is that we we take a group of uh, six artists away for five days um, and we've we've gone to a variety of different places um, the most uh, recent one we did um, we've been well actually we've done it at Cove Park over near Helensburgh we've done it there several times we've been up at uh, Lithe Art Centre up near Wick um, in March this year just before couple of weeks before lockdown, we were at Fintorn. Um, we've also done it down in Dumfries and Galloway, but the idea is that it's a group of people who, who are going to spend a few days away from their usual surroundings to have time to have a, a facilitated conversation about what it is they feel they need to be able to continue thriving as an artist. <clears throat> excuse me, um, and half the time, so in the mornings, there are these conversations based around the questions that people bring with them, based on this central question of how, how you can continue to thrive as an artist. In the afternoon, the time is free, it's available for people to do what they want. And that might mean that people do some work, it might mean they go for a walk. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's completely free time for people do whatever they want. So it's it's the idea of it is really to try and um, give people a bit of nurture, nurtured time that we, particularly as freelancers, we don't often feel able to give ourselves. Because space time, like Rough Mix, is a paid opportunity. We pay people for their time for all the work that we do. It's a really important principle uh, for me that people shouldn't be expected to give up paid time in order to um, be able to take advantage of these opportunities. Um, so both Space Time and Rough Mix, I suppose, are really focused around trying to support experienced artists, so artists who've been working for a few years to continue to kind of keep going, to continue developing which partly came out of an observation that, again, there's there are often quite a few opportunities for more early career artists, and then the opportunities drop away a bit as you become more experienced. Uh, so a lot of our focus at Magnetic North is on people who've been working for a few years, know what they're doing, but could do with um, just a bit of nurturing and support to keep keep on doing what they're doing. People tend to come with um, a lot of interdisciplinary experience, or does that tend to be uh, a bit of uh, part of, I suppose, the the, the, um, the uniqueness of the experience with Rough Mix, um, or is it is it quite varied? It, it very varied. Some some people will come to it with a kind of, I suppose, an ex explicit kind of cross-discipline experience already. Other people will never have done anything like it. In fact, I was talking to someone earlier today who was asking about the type of projects that people might bring. And I, I was saying that there was a project that somebody brought um, a few years ago, which feels to me like it was like the archetypal kind of rough mix project. This um, was a woman who's a sculptor. She'd never done anything uh if you like in this way in a kind of multidisciplinary way but she had this idea that she 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 makes objects and they're quite strange kind of intriguing quite big objects and she had this idea that she'd be interested to see what would happen if she gave one of these objects to a group of performers what they might do with it and um and it was amazing because she kind of she built this thing which had lots of 
it was it had ink that it was it was an extraordinary kind of assemblage of material um and there was ink that came out of the top and it was um quite a large object and and she said to the the performers I, I don't really know but just kind of see see what happens if you do something with it so the so they did and they the performers loved it because they were kind of being given this <laughs> task and for the the artist she was it, she was astonished at what what developed and it set off a whole kind of conversation for her and the performers she was working with about how that could develop and um and it so she came to that with no idea of what if you like multidisciplinary work might be and um but just with an interest in seeing what might happen and um and it 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 had quite a big effect on the, the way that she worked so although it is multidisciplinary it doesn't mean that the work that happens there has to be multidisciplinary yes. but inevitably it kind of it can happen that people start to one experience sort of bleeds into another um and i guess um artists will come you know enthused with their ideas and what they're bringing to the residency but possibly also with you know sort of uh, the unknown and you know the potential for yeah, the things not to necessarily always, you know, neatly, you know, connect or or there to be more challenging conversations and 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 discoveries. Um, I, I I wonder if you can talk a bit about, you know, I suppose there's the unexpected that comes with putting six artists and a whole bunch of other people together in a space or place. Yeah, it is. There's a, and there's a there there is a huge element of. Um, trust I suppose that has to be uh, created for that to happen um, and I suppose that's part that's part of my role as the kind of facilitator of it is to create the circumstances in which people feel uh, that they trust each other that they come to trust each other and to um, feel safe to uh, try try stuff out and it builds i mean i suppose it's that thing of if you have a group of people doing something together they very quickly uh they very quickly form a bond and i spent and over the years of doing it i think i've got quite good at being able to put a group together um i know I, I wouldn't i don't think i'd be able to write a manual on how to do it but i've kind of got a got a sense of how to do it now um so that um that the element of trust and of creating the, the the atmosphere in which people can feel that trust and kind of dare themselves to try and sometimes you do see people who you can you sense have come with their idea and they're going to stick to it and then uh um, and then slowly start to realize, oh, if I maybe don't stick to that idea and just let myself, you know, um, sway, uh, you know, come off, yes. the path, come off the path a little bit <laughs> uh, and allow themselves to discover <laughs> what's in the, in the undergrowth. Well, the, yeah, there's one of my favorite artists that I work with always talks about how he has an idea, but holds it very lightly. I think that's probably an advantage in this kind of context, um, you know, because you do want to come with some some shape and, and form and direction, but you also want that that excitement of being influenced by all the things going on around you. Um, and it, you know, it's really interesting to hear about your role of the facilitator to kind of hold that space um, and and maybe um, support people with negotiating different aspects of it and. I suppose making sure that it's a rounded experience for everyone, which is is by no means, I'm I'm sure, an easy challenge when you're dealing with potentially quite different technical requirements as mm. well as obviously um, you know creative impulses and, and approaches. Um, so yeah, I imagine it's quite a fascinating um, and and ch probably challenging thing to to do in a, in a defined space and place, 
and probably an even more challenging thing to do in a sort of virtual space when you're not grounded. And I guess, uh, you know, St seeing Sterling's a place-based program, and of course we're also virtual and we're finding new ways to connect and, 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 and bring people together, which is quite exciting. Um, I, I imagine the, the virtual side of that is, is um, a technical challenge, if nothing else. Yeah, and I, I, I kind of, I don't know how that, how that's going to be. I mean, un, usually, I mean, I guess part of what we do when it, it under, usually is kind of, I suppose, to some extent, manage people's expectations in advance, because mm -hmm. one of the, I suppose, one of the key things about Rough Mix is that it's about, um, if you like, it's about the idea and it's about exploring the idea. It's not about creating something that's technically polished and brilliant. And, you know, it's about the process, not about the, the outcome. Yeah. So sometimes, and, you know, sometimes people will get a bit overexcited about, oh, we, you know, maybe I could light it in this amazing way. And it, you kind of just have to say, well, you could, but there, it, you might find it more productive to focus on the, if you like the process of getting there rather than trying to make it look like a beautiful uh, finished thing. But it will be, um, it will be different online. Um, and, and how do you normally share the work at the end? Is it, is it, uh, is it, uh, uh, is it about sharing the process between people? Is there a sharing externally? Um, what, what can we expect from Rough Mix um, and yeah. the cleanup? Yeah, there is, we always do a sharing at the end, a public sharing. Um, and people have the option to, they can either share some work or they can talk about what they've done. And to be honest, people always end up, I don't, I think only once has somebody talked about what they've done. And in fact, when they did do that, they turned it, it was kind of quite, they turned it into a performance so it was they kind of quite cleverly then subverted what they were doing um and every time we come to it we always have this question about is it right to do a public sharing because it does add it adds a little bit of pressure particularly in the second week because people start to think about friday evening and what what am i going to show at six o'clock on friday <laughs> In, inevitably i think you can't you can't help but but do that um so but i uh, the every time i think about it and actually every time i talk to the artists about it it i think what it always feels like is that it is it does set a bit of a kind of um challenge but it gives it a sense of your head of where you're going whereas if it was just we finished on friday and everybody went home it might it would maybe feel like it has less of a an end point um so we've all we've always despite thinking about it every time we kind of think is it the right thing and then it, we always seem to end up thinking yes it, it is the right thing um and i think generally the artists who take part do find that it does give um, a good focus to, to the work and it is and it's presented in quite um, a low-key informal uh, way it becomes slightly less informal uh, last year 20 yeah, 2019 we did it at Perth Theatre in the studio there which is a really beautiful new studio with lots of light, nice lighting and <laughs> that, that inevitably kind of polished everything up a bit because there were all these lovely lights that could change colours you know there were LED lights that you could just dial in whatever colour you wanted and you had to do that because there weren't when you know if you're doing it in a studio with windows it's fine you just do it in daylight with a few lights on um, so then it it did start to become a little more polished which is not quite what it's what it's about but um it's but it's it's yeah it's different every time and it finds it finds its own form each time so somehow it'll find what its own form mm -hmm. 
in a room. Um, and um, so just thinking about um, artists um, that um, obviously you're looking for established artists and then there's a call out as well for um, earlier career artists. What are you looking for? What are the qualities and what, you know, what is your sort of sensibility, I suppose, and, and it, you know, quite apart from what's on people's CVs? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I suppose, what's the application process like as well? What can people expect? Um, I, I guess, it, how do you assess how ripe somebody is for collaboration? <laughs> that's a, that's a, a very good uh, question. Um, so what we're looking for with the, the lead artists is um, a certain level of experience, which is kind of hard to pin down. And also I try not to be too specific about it because it is quite flexible. But I think we, in the, in the guidance, we say five years of making, uh, making work or exhibiting work or, you know, whatever the, the way is that your work manifests itself of kind of, making your own work um, and having it shown or performed or released or however it is. Um, and I think what the, the, in a way, the key thing I think is about the idea. So what, what the application form, which is, it's an online uh, form, which um, asks you know, the usual kind of who you are and what you've done and ask for a, a, a CV. But I, the, the really key question is the one about what what is the idea that you're interested in exploring? Because it, and again, it's, 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 a, it's a difficult thing to pin down precisely, but I think that the elements that make a good idea to develop at rough mix are it's an it's a fairly early stage of an idea so it's probably not something that you've already done quite a lot of work on and kind of know where you're going to and what you really need is uh you know a week in a studio just to kind of polish it up not and there's nothing wrong with that and being at that stage that's just not quite the right thing for this context um ideas that are at a, a much earlier stage where you don't quite you kind of know what you're trying to do but you don't quite know how you're going to get there um it's a bit like uh, peter brook the theater director talks in one of his books about a form having a formless hunch mm -hmm. Um, and that then your job is to start kind of working out what this, where this formless hunch is leading you. And there's a bit of an element of that, I think, that makes quite a good rough mix project is one where you kind of, yeah, you know something about what you're trying to do. And you, or you might know how it is that you're going to go about doing it. But you haven't got to the, you haven't got to too concrete a, uh, a stage with it. <clears throat> um, I suppose the other thing is that it's, well, usually I would say it, it's something that um, for which having a, a group of performers and some other artists around would be useful, would be a useful kind of, um, so I suppose if you're, if you're writing a book, it's probably not such a useful um place to do that but if it's about playing around with some ideas that might go into a book or into something then it's um then that is suitable so if it if it's something that is has probably a, some sort of physical element to it um that is is fairly early on or the, uh, the other thing that I always say that is it doesn't, the idea could be about a, making a new approach to the way you mm -hmm. work. So it could be about trying out a different way of doing something. Um, because this is quite a good 
I think that th this is quite a good forum for that. Because again, sometimes that's a difficult thing to get to try out. If you think, oh, do you know, I'd always, I'd always like to not do things quite the way I've always done them. But you don't want to take the risk of doing that when um, you've got to, when you've got to have an end product in, you know, uh, a month or two months or six months or whatever it is. That, that's not necessarily conducive to suddenly approaching something in a completely different way. But two weeks with no, with sort of low stakes is an opportunity to, to do that. Um, so in that, in a slightly vague way, those are the, some of the, some of the qualities. The other thing I suppose I should say in terms of the application and how, how we choose people is it's, a there are two elements to it. There's first of all, the idea and whether the idea seems like a, a, a one that would work in this context. There's also about the mixture of people. So when we're looking at who to choose, we're also looking at how might this group of people um, work, to, you know, what would people bring and how, also sometimes you'll get ideas that you say, oh, that's interesting because these two people are they're bringing something that there's a kind of link, there's a link here. So that might be quite interesting to see those two things um, being developed side by side. Um, so I suppose there's an element of curation about putting the, the group together mm -hmm. about the, the different art forms and the different ideas and how you think they might um, link up. In some I imagine that some of the, I suppose, the, the magic and the joy of curating this is kind of looking at a series of, un, of seemingly unrelated applications, different artists, and going, what if that idea and that idea and that artist and that artist were in a room together? And, uh, you know, I guess that's, it, it, it sort of brings to life for me why it might be a really interesting and unique project for a theatre company to want to, to facilitate and put in place, because I'm sure and you've, you've already talked a bit about how much you learn from the process, but the idea of having this sort of company um, of of ideas and company of 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 different artists um, and practices um, evolving something and it probably in a, in a sort of semi devised way um, you know, just sounds very exciting and stimulating, um, and um, I imagine that they're very sort of energized and and and. Um, and if 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 um, um, nerve wracking time as well, <laughs> but um, it sounds like you create that very sort of um, safe space that people can can do that. So it sounds absolutely brilliant. I mean, and what are the things and the qualities and, and things you see in, in terms of the way that people work collaboratively that are very successful? Because obviously you'll have seen lots of different artists doing things. Mm -hmm. um what are the sort of things that you you know because at, at, you know more broadly speaking we're looking as much um it seems starting about how we can support collaboration um mm -hmm. in different types of arenas different kinds of way through digital commissions through um the way that we network um the way we share practice so it's just really interested in as somebody who um curates and supports and and us to hold space for collaboration what are the kinds of things that you you see that are maybe um you know sort of things to look out for in good collaboration i think that there's um there's a thing about respect in in terms of um i suppose respecting each other each other's skills in uh, i think the best collaborations are when people admire each other's work um and kind of appreciate the difference between them. I think what's interesting about collaboration is people people often, I, I find that often people will have an opinion about themselves as a collaborator. They, you know, they might say, oh yeah, I'm a really good collaborator. And sometimes actually you, you see people and you think, oh, actually, no, you're not a good collaborator. <laughs> um, you're maybe good at getting getting to do what you want to do because you've got the loudest voice, uh, but which maybe might appear to be collaboration in, from your point of view. There are other people, and I, there's someone I work with quite often 
uh, who always says, I'm, I'm not a good collaborator, I don't like collaborating. But actually, he's a brilliant collaborator. Um, and I, I'm not quite sure what it is that makes him a good collaborator. I think it's partly that he he's interested. I think it's, he has an interest in how things work and how things might work differently. And although he, this person often knows their own mind, but he also knows what he doesn't know. And I yes. think both, both those things are, are really useful qualities in a collaboration because you, you do need, you need a little bit of resistance because otherwise it, it can become a bit of a, um, you know, a kind of splurgy, it's like mixing all the paint colors together and getting kind yes. of mud color. You need tension, it's, don't you, when yeah, in these you processes? Need, yeah, you need the right amount of tension. Um, the, um, so I think it needs a little bit of resistance and push and pull and because that's what if you like that tension and resistance and the push and pull are what pull people out of their normal habits and I think that the ideal thing of a good collaboration is that everybody who takes part in it ends up doing something in a way they wouldn't have done it before mm -hmm. um and um there's a a phrase that uh i use quite often and i can never remember where i actually got it from in the first place but is about um exquisite pressure and that there's kind of like a there's a perfect amount there's too much and there's too little and you just you never quite know where that point is going to be uh but there's most enough. people in the creative sector want to find that point most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we probably wouldn't do the jobs that we do. <laughs> but it's finding that balance is really difficult. But I, I think in these kind of environments, you can do that. You can create that that, that space for that to happen. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, um, and I think I think also just sorry, I, I, I just to say that's also part of the thing of it being the two week thing. I know we're doing yes. three weeks this time. The two week thing is also that any more than that and it starts to be it starts to become trying to finish something yeah but any less than that isn't so two weeks is like this moment that feels like it is the that's that's brilliant um sorry you were about to ask i feel that. like no no i feel like it could go on all night um i'm just keen to to make sure that other folk get to, mm. to ask any questions that they have um and um so i i'd certainly like to open up in case anybody would like to join in the conversation um, it's really exciting to hear about this and it gives a really good um, sense of not only what rough mix is like and how you work, but also some of the things that, that as creative people we can look at in terms of how we collaborate um, and maybe thinking about that side um, of, of the work that we do um, and making space for, um, I suppose, um, that those early ideas and, and, and the genesis of things and different ways that we can maybe open up that um, with others creatively. But um, I, I wonder, Malcolm and Carolyn, did you have any questions you wanted to jump in with? Not, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. If it's okay, I will, yeah. I will do actually. Um, forgive me, I think my, I'm staying in my parents' house right now and my mom is doing her like singing practice in the background. So we hear some singing <laughs> coming in the background, you know, you know what it's, where it's coming from um so my yeah firstly really interesting and thanks thanks for everything so far and um i'll just try to be as brief as i can though so that we leave time for like, other questions and stuff um i think my main question was about um in in terms of the application like talking about this idea of like a hunch or like mm -hmm. a not fully formed idea like i can definitely relate to with with what you mean by that but i was wondering more if you had any advice on how how to explain to someone who doesn't know about this hunch, how do you explain the hunch itself? You know, if you got, I mean, like, how do you make, how do you like translate that idea of a hunch that can actually be understood to a certain degree by yeah. someone else? Uh, uh, that's a, uh, that's a, a very good question. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm not, I, I don't have a definitive answer to that, but I think, I think there's something about um, knowing there's a um 
there's an American uh, theatre director called Anne Bogart who I uh, I did some I trained with uh, a, a few years ago, and she always talks about um, uh, an idea, some or a project being a bit like a stool with three legs, and that it's really useful if you know what two of them are, but you need to. You, there needs to be an element of it that you don't know about and that's what you're and i think in terms of um if you like the, the formless hunch i think it's useful to to know something about it but for there to be a, a, an area of it that you don't know about so it could be that um you know so it might be that you know how you're going to explore this idea uh, but you don't know how it's going to turn out or it might be that you've there's you've got um a starting point that's a really clear starting point which could be um a, let's say it could be a book you know that you're interested in uh adapting this book or it, a, a piece of music or there could be like a a concrete thing but you don't know where it's going to go or there could be um it could be that there's a form that you know you're trying to get to but you don't know what it is that's going to become that form so i think it's 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 finding what you know what you don't know and working out the uh so there's something about knowing what it is that you don't know and that that's the thing that, so even if you can't describe what the thing is that you don't know it's about having identified mm -hmm. what the don't know bit of it is um, um I, I i wonder if sometimes it's quite useful to ask the question question what if i could do explore this or what if and i think i like that you know i obviously work in different contexts but you know i've had the joy of sometimes being able to ask those questions and make things happen so um for example we did a, I mean, it's a project at the, the foot of shahalian with john muir trust a year ago as artling central and the question was what if we could base a, a group of artists um at the bottom of a mountain and explore the attraction of mountains um in a different way from the way that people tend to explore them and then that kind of opens up all sorts of and we had some ideas um because it was grounded by research and it was you know it's that kind of thing about you know i suppose having a part of the journey that you can't see uh but that you know where you're gonna head um into the woods is, i think you said something like yeah. that actually and i think questions are really questions are a really good way so in fact, a question can be a really good, you know, I'd like to find out what would happen if I, well, in the case of that, the one I was talking about earlier, it was, I want to know what would happen if I put one of my sculpt sculptures in a room with a group of performers. Um, someone else, I'm trying to think of other question ones. I remember there was an, another one that I really liked as an idea was someone who said, I'm really interested in the moment just before something happens and I'd like to explore that um and I think that's a that's a really good because it's there's you think oh my god that that's yeah what does happen in that moment so there's a re there's a, a really known and unknown element in that that you feel like that's there's somewhere interesting to go that um, sounds Yes, I, there's there's lots there, lots of texture there, and I think it's just finding your way into it, yeah. um, so that you can clear it, 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 the finding the words to describe the idea is is always a challenge because quite often you're worrying about what the other person reading it's going to say. But if you're really self assured that you know what your idea is and uh, yourself, and you can explain it to yourself, it, it, I think you can probably find the way to to, to, to express it across. I guess as well sometimes. Uh, uh, artists are, are much more comfortable expressing these things through their their work itself and less through applications and and, and text and words so uh, i wonder if that sometimes plays in into to how people respond to these these calls it can and also i think because i suppose often you're 
expected in an application to describe what it is you're going to end up with. Yeah. Um, even though you probably don't know what it is you're going to end up with, you have to kind of pretend for the purposes of this funding application that you do know. Um, and I suppose what, with rough mix, actually, you don't need to know. Uh, but but that makes it harder because you're so used to saying it's going to be. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a sculpture. of It's two giant horses heads is what it's going to end up being. <laughs> um, it's almost the bit you do before you write the funding application, yeah. uh, which often takes the longest time sometimes. Um, uh, did you have any other questions, Malcolm or, or, or Carolyn? Just, I'm a student, I'm a matrician at Forest Valley. I've just started my third year of my degree. So would this project run next year? If, say, I come to end of my degree and say, I'm looking to do, I, I think it's an ongoing, yeah. it's ongoing. We, we run it every year uh, yeah. and, and have done, it's run every year um since uh since 2012 so um and then before that it used to happen kind of every other there was a longer gap because we used to have to try and find the funding uh, and now it's got easier to find the funding because people kind of understand a bit more about what it is so yeah uh, we plan to run it once a year every year and it's quite often at the beginning of the year partly because that's often a time when uh theatres or buildings are quite quiet because you know up in, in Jan January is often quite a quiet time so it's easier to find somewhere where uh, you can have two studios to to work in for a, a couple of weeks. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it will happen again. Yeah because I, I just want just trying to find out about what's out there <laughs> when yeah. I graduate. Yeah. So it's yeah. Thank you. And I think that's one of the the, the things that we're, we're looking at in terms of, of seeing Sterling is where the opportunities are for artists, particularly artists from the area who often have to go quite far away um, to to kind of have these kinds of opportunities and experiences. So it is, um, although you're not actually at McRobert, it's lovely to have something based from from Sterling and to, and you know, and ordinarily this would be an opportunity for at least artists, even if, you know, to people to see the work in these kinds of processes yeah. and actions, even if they're not taking part in them uh, themselves. So um, I, I, I imagine that there will be some challenges around if the artists selected don't have access to the kinds of space to make work, but uh, yeah. I'm imagining you're, you're, you're considering all that at the moment. Yeah, anyway. thinking about how that, and obviously it'll depend slightly on, you know, who, what level we're at and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it it could be that it it could be possible that depending on where people are, there could be some form of, um, what you know what they call in edu blended learning in as they say yeah. uh, at my son's school. You know where actually they maybe there could be an element where some people could actually get be in a room together. Mm -hmm. um, well, and and with the the McRobert being based at the University of Stirling, which has you know outdoor spaces, the path for buildings, all these outdoor, you know, there mm. is there's probably more scope than um, than 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 sometimes you think there's going to be. Um, how much does place feature in the in the in the in the, in, the, in, 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 in how impact on the residencies that generally you know? Uh, do yeah, that that it, it does a lot actually. Um, um, because we've done it in a in a in a few different places. So we were uh, we were at Summer Hall at the beginning of this year. We've done that was the third time we've done it at Summer Hall, and Summer Hall has a very particular um, uh, impact. Partly because it's got lots of interesting places in it, and it's next to the meadows. You know, there's kind of lot. So that brings a particular, and there's a kind of rough and readiness about Summer Hall. Um, Whereas when we were at Perth Theatre, you know, that had just reopened, it, everything was very nice. It was, you know, that that had its own uh, impact on it uh, as well um, in terms of its, um, there was a kind of polish to everything there. We also, we did it up in Aberdeen. Aberdeen was the first time that um, in, in 2016, we did it not in either Edinburgh or Glasgow. Um, and 
that was really interesting because actually being um so there were some artists from Aberdeen who took part in it and there were others who had come from elsewhere um so again that had a slightly different feel because actually there, there was quite a large group who were uh living together as opposed to usually people are just commuting in and so it is it, it is and i think being up at the university would have, if if we had been there physically for two weeks would have made it you know because there's all that land and you know trees and the the lake and you know there's a, a lot of stuff around there which i'm sure would have had a um an impact um but I, I, it's important to say that actually although it isn't happening at the mcrobert yes they're still a partner and they are still keen for there to be sterling based uh that although it's not physically in sterling yeah um they're still keen for there to be sterling artists uh involved in it so that is a kind of a priority from uh from our point of view of trying to because there's a kind of there's a developmental thing about it you know when we did it in aberdeen there were some aberdeen artists involved in it but also it was about people being able to come and being aware that this was going on and being able to come and see the end results and you know it had a and there was an you know there are collaborations that grew out of that that have carried on in aberdeen and we did it in peebles one year as well uh uh, and that was yeah it it's it does always it it picks up something of the place where it's happening even if as in this case it it won't actually be there but I, but, but some I, of the people may well be there you know it's absolutely you know. and you know um i think you know hopefully through this you know through scene sterling and through the McRobert, you know it will become something that's shared and more people are more aware of and you know it's making connections that to this kind of work that you know doesn't tend to have we don't tend to have in sterling as much um as perhaps in in other places so it's a really uh it's a really um amazing opportunity um and it also hopefully will leave a legacy in terms of of the aspiration for sterling going forward so really appreciate that i guess um we i i, I realize we've been chatting for about an hour now which is uh is, is is it's been fantastic just wanted to double check if there are any last questions or anything that anyone wants to ask because i'm sure you you've all had long days um and this has been very generous of you to spend some time and talk to us and certainly um uh you know we're going to you know, obviously share this but i think it's it's useful in terms of thinking about collaboration about residencies, about artist development, which is something that Seen Sterling is going to be taking forward and hopefully the partners as well. So, um, and hopefully some of the artists will consider putting applications forward. And, yeah. So the deadline is next uh, next week. Um, yeah. That's why we wanted to be keen to, to get this yeah. conversation soon so that we could try and make sure everyone had lots of information. Um, yeah, yeah. So any last questions from anybody? Sure. Could I ask one last? I know we're running out of time, but can I ask mm -hmm. one last thing? It was. It was. I don't know if it's really a proper question, but um, I just really interested in this environment you talked about, like especially about like the space to sort of observe each other and mm -hmm. learn about the practice and process of other art forms. And yeah. I was just wondering, um, for example, like if one was to have an idea and without necessarily collaborating concretely in one sense, but a form of collaboration being simply allowing this space on like observation of, a, of observing other artists and how they work, allowing that to inform your idea. Is that also kind of seen as a form of collaboration, even if it's not like a direct, like, okay, A working with B to make this happen? Is, it, is that process still sort of absolutely. seen as that? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Because it's really, it's about the, um, so I, I think it's, people are working on their own ideas and they're developing their, and, um, and it may be um, that there's a useful skill that someone else has that can feed into that, and it maybe becomes more of a collaboration. But that's not that's not essential. the The essential thing I think is about the opportunity to have conversations too. So it might be that, because um, uh, I, I schedule everything 
every day about who's going to be where and when. And so people might just come in and sit if in the physical situation, sit at the sit at the back and just watch. Um, or it might become somebody might say, "Oh, can I uh, can I get so and so in?" Because actually, they know how to do something that I I quite like to to do some work on. So it it's it's a very open thing, and it can be a very simple collaboration, which is just about having a conversation or even just observing each other. Or it can become a more formed thing. It's very flexible and very open to. Um, it, very open to how people want to use that, use that opportunity. There must be something about the performativity of, of doing ma doing your work, making your work, and then being observed. At, you know, for some art forms, people will be used to, but other art forms might might be a, a bit of an unknown. Yeah, yeah, um, and that. So there, yeah, there is a vulnerability, and sometimes people will say, "Actually, do you know what? I just want, I just like to actually spend some time on my own today to have a think about what I'm going to do." And that's, you know, that's that's fine. I I try to keep it as uh, it's as easy going. I don't want people to feel stress in the wrong way. Um, so it's very much about making it work for how people want to use use the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, unless there's any more questions, I'll just double check, no more questions. Thank you so much. Um, I feel like I've uh, picked up just so much from the conversation tonight, just about, um, I suppose, how you hold this project and, and how it's evolved and uh, about the kinds of considerations um, and the thoughtfulness, I think, of it. Um, uh, and it's a real gift, I think, to the artists um, as well as you know, necessary um and um it really um i suppose um reiterates one of the things that we should all be thinking about in terms of nurturing and supporting artists um at different stages of their career uh, and their development as producers um and as a creative community so that's been really useful and also just really useful to to, to hear about the practicalities and also some of the, the you know the really good things that like one of the hardest things in a funding application to do no matter which what kind of project is how to describe an idea and how to do that without finishing it um and actually that's been a very useful discussion in itself to talk about um how how we articulate some of those those tensions and those difficulties and the, and, and and the sort of nebulousness that we sometimes want um around something that maybe is concrete uh, so that's been just great to, to have that conversation um and i certainly hope um that we get a good contingent of sterling based applications coming through um and certainly um also an audience hopefully of some sort for for, for the work when it's produced and 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 uh, we, you know obviously we'd be keen to to help tell the story or share the story of what's happening in Sterling um, with this rough mix um, as well. So thank you so much for your time, Nicholas. Um, thanks, time. Malcolm and Carolyn, for joining us. I really appreciate it. And um, we'll post this up pretty soon on our website so that folk can catch up if they've missed out. And hopefully they'll follow up and, and catch some of this really, um, um, really lovely conversations. So thank you. Thank you. And I know that there's a you've got a really good post with all the information in. Yes, so it's on our blog, Seen Sterling yeah. blog, um, and you can go on there. And Great. I also recommend you've got a video of the the 2019 one, which has got some of the mm -hmm. artists' voices talking about it. And you've had some amazing talent, Nicholas Scruton, I think Jenna Watt possibly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Jenna's worked at the McRobert a lot. Um, there's um, yeah, a, a whole raft of amazing people who've come through um, rough mix. So it'd be really exciting to see who 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 eventually um, is part of the the panel this year. So thank you so much. And hope thank you all you. have a good evening. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Good night. Bye.